Hello and welcome to the 411 on making money online. Today in this video, we are going to feature inspiring interviews with successful entrepreneurs who started their ventures after the age of 40. We will share their stories, challenges, and key lessons providing motivation and insights for middle-aged individuals contemplating making money online. First gentleman we have is Rick John Richardson. He went from working a corporate job to starting an e-commerce site for green living when he was 45 years old. This shows how strong and how passionate he was. Challenges he faced, leaving behind the security of a stable job presented Richardson with several challenges. There were a lot of problems at the beginning, like not knowing how to handle money, learning how to do business online, and the risk of starting over in a niche market. At the time, sustainability was still a new idea, which made it harder to persuade people that eco-friendly goods were worth buying. Richardson knew how important it was to have a strong online presence in the competitive world of e-commerce. He spent time and money learning about digital marketing, search engine optimization, and social media techniques to deal with this. With these tools, he slowly built an engaging website that not only showed off his eco-friendly products, but also explained the philosophy and goal behind his brand. A big part of building his online profile was making interesting content that spoke to people who care about the environment. Richardson taught his readers about the environmental effects of the things they bought and the benefits of a living in a way that doesn't harm the environment through blogs, social media, and emails. Working with environmental activists and people with a lot of power helped him spread his message to more people. The fact that Richardson was dedicated to doing more than just selling things added a lot of his, to his credibility online. Being true to your values, Richardson's steadfast dedication to his beliefs was one of the things that made him stand out. Greenwashing was common in the market, so he made sure that everyone knew where his eco-friendly goods came from, how they were made, and what effect they had. This honesty struck a chord with customers who were looking for companies that really cared about the environment. Richardson refused to give in to the environmentally friendly parts in order to make more money. He made it clear that keeping true to his values wasn't just the right thing to do, it was also the smart thing to do. It helped his customers trust him more, which led to a group of loyal, eco-friendly shoppers. The next gentleman we have is Robert Hernandez, who broke into the competitive world of technology at the age of 48. His story is one of drive and resilience shown by the way he overcame doubt and age-related stereotypes. Skepticism and stereotypes. Hernandez entered the tech industry at an age when most people think a person's best years are of as a worker are over. He faced skepticism and possible from possible clients, investors, and even some peers in the industry. A common belief in the tech world is that the younger people are better at keeping up with how quickly technology changes. This may make older businesses like less likely to be able to keep up. Hernandez had a great deal of problems like being seen as less creative or less likely to follow the latest trends. People who might have hired him might have wondered if he could give them the cutting edge answers that the tech industry needs. Investors may have been hesitant because he because they think that younger founders are a better bet in the tech world, which is always changing and moving quickly. Getting used to new technologies, Hernandez overcame these problems by consciously adopting an attitude of constant learning. In the tech business, he knew that staying ahead meant committing to ongoing learning and change. Here are some specific ways he dealt with constantly changing world of technology. Hernandez spent time and money to keep up with the newest tech trends, tools, and computer languages. This is called continuous education. He did this by taking classes, going to regular workshops, and going to conferences in his field to make sure his skills remained useful. Hernandez knew how important it was to learn from others, so he looked for mentors who were already working in the tech field. He was able to learn about new tools and market trends to make connections with both younger and older people. Hernandez used agile development in his business that makes software. 
This was of working, let his team quickly adapt to changes in technologies and project needs, which made sure they stayed flexible and met client needs. Strategic relationships. Hernandez made strategic relationships with other businesses and tech experts to add to his company's technology skills. Working with younger workers who are good with technology brought new ideas and technical know-how to the table. Hernandez showed that he could adapt by using the newest technologies and making his company a place where people are always learning. He also showed that age does not matter when it comes to success in the tech business. Before I move on, I wanted to let you know, take a moment to let you know that I'm promoting a course called YouTube Mastery and Monetization by Matt Parr. It's an excellent course if you ever wanted to learn about YouTube and how to operate your own channel, even a faceless channel like I'm doing right now, and you don't have to make videos either to be successful on YouTube's platform. I have more information listed in the description under this video for those that may be interested. It's totally free to check it out. Okay, where were we? Okay, back to, now we go to the female Laura Miller at age 42 went from right, working as a journalist to starting a popular blog. Her story shows how she was able to adapt to challenging digital world, deal with problems, and find happiness in connecting with people all over the world. Change from journalism. Miller used her experiences as a journalist to give her blog a unique point of view. She was great at story telling stories and had a great eye for finding interesting ones, which helped her write content that people really connected with. By writing about her own experiences, she turned her blog into a place where people could be real and connect with each other. Niche expertise. Miller used her years of experience as a journalist to find a niche that her that fit her hobbies and skills. Making this strategic move out on, not only helped her stand out in a crowded place in the market, but it also made her an expert on the subject she chose. Technical learning curve. Miller had learned how to manage websites, do search engine optimization, and do other technical things that came with building an online profile as a journalist who was new to the digital world. To get past the re -pro these problems, you had to make a promise to learn new things and keep up with digital market trends. Consistency in content. To build a trustworthy online reputation, content had to be created consistently. Miller had to come up with a content plan that included regular blog posts, interesting images, and smart social media use. This consistency was very important for getting and keeping a loyal audience. Changing with the times. The digital world is always changing and content needs to change very quickly. Miller was open to change and kept up with the latest developments in social media, blogs, and search engine optimization. Because she was flexible, she was able to change her content approach and keep her blog relevant to her readers. Using a variety of content types, Miller used a variety of content, content because she knew how important multimedia content was. Adding videos, infographics, and engaging features to her blog, she is more, it is more fun to use and catered to a wide range of audience tastes. Social media helped Miller reach people all over the world by letting her share her blog posts and interact with them. This not only helped her reach more customers, but it also let her connect directly with readers from different cultures. Miller was happy when she could make a real community around her blog, not just a bunch of numbers. By responding to comments, forums, and social media posts, she made her fans feel like they belonged. This group of people not only backed her blog, but they also added to the depth of the discussions. Telling stories that have an effect. Miller's skill at writing stories, what people could, that people could relate to, and how that had an effect way beyond geographical boundaries. People from all walks of life could relate to her stories, which helped 
than feel like they had a similar experience. Next one on the list is Susan Thompson, who went from working as an accountant from nine to five to running a successful online craft business by the time she was 50. This shows how strong, creative, and determined she is. Susan had to change her skills when she quit her job as an accountant to explore a creative project. The scientific skills she had learned in finance were useful, but they were not the same as the craft and art skills she would need for a new business. To get over ob this obstacle, she had to dedicate herself to learning and improving her skills. Thompson knew how to work in a standard market, but finding her way around the digital world was harder. She had to learn everything that were, was to know about e-commerce and how to set up an online store to how to manage goods and go digital and do digital marketing. Because of this learning curve, people had to be flexible and open to her tools. In an article, arsenal market, artisanal market, you need to do more than just big beautiful goods to start a branch, a brand from scratch. Thompson had to come up with a brand personality, a compelling brand story, and a way to set her handcrafted goods apart from massively produced alternatives. This branding process needed people to be creative and think strategically. Susan was successful because she had she could add her own imagination to the things she made by hand. It was her one-of-a-kind patterns, personalized touches, or creative use of materials that made her hand goods stand out in the crowded market. This unique the uniqueness of her goods became a big selling point, drawing in people who wanted something unique and handmade. Thompson used creative marketing techniques to show off her goods on the internet. She used imagination to get the attention of her target audience, from taking photos of her products that looked good to telling stories on social media. Engaging material and presentations that looked great were very important for spreading the word about her brand. Thompson, dr Thompson's drive was clearly was clear in, in her ability to keep going even when things got hard as a business owner. Her unraveling, unwavering dedication to her goal kept her moving forward even when there was pro there were problems with technology, changes in the market, or competition. The online market is always changing, and so was the trends. Thompson's success depended on how willing she was to change with her times when it came to new technologies, buyer tastes, and market trends. Her proactive approach to staying current made sure that her online craft business would last. Thompson's drive to give great customer service was a key part of her success. Strong relationships and her customers were built through personalized contact, quick responses, and a dedication to quality. This led to customers' loyalty and goodwill. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you found it valuable, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell for more valuable content.